Hello everyone, my name is Harold Campos. I am a PM for Azure Integration Services, and I will be speaking about the patterns for a gradual modernization of mainframes using Logic Apps and Host Integration Server. So let's get to the basics. A mainframe modernization, there are multiple ways to, um, um, to categorize a modernization. Uh, we found that these four ways, lift and shift, code conversion, extend and rewrite, are the, the simple ones, the simplest way to, to explain how to modernize. Lift and shift, you move the world, workloads as they are, uh, as much as, as it is possible, to run on a specific software that act as a sort of emulator or application deployment environment. In code conversion, you refactor from COBOL to Java, for instance, or COBOL to .NET Core. And, uh, and then you will have applications that will resemble cloud native applications. Uh, you can rewrite the workloads in the mainframe uh, and data, and you can extend or coexist to augment mainframe workloads with new and additional Azure services. There are some other patterns like replatform, uh, uh, lift and shift with changes closer to lift and shift slash rehost, mainframe as a service, mid ranges as a service, or just retire the workload uh, and then get something else. Now, um, for larger mainframes, um, it becomes more interesting because, um, you know, mainframes have been around for uh, many years, right? And they have, they are not really servers, they are really ecosystem. So then, um, we ran this survey with some partners and then we asked them, how do you, would you rank the reasons why customers are not migrating off the mainframes to the cloud at a faster pace? And they indicated that's mostly because of on-premises dependencies, which um, which is interesting and, 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 and makes a lot of sense, right? Because uh, um, one of the, uh, the things that we need to consider with these mainframes slash ecosystems is that they've been around for ages, so then they have created a lot of dependencies outside, Java applications, uh, .NET applications, data replication, those kind of things. So so then you may plan for may maybe jumping into, into the migration because of the mainframe per se, but you can't forget, you know, what it's outside the mainframe, and that discourages some customers to do it. So then we'll talk about how is it that we can help them um, to conduct this uh, entire modernization. Now let's talk about um, the design and implementation patterns because uh, this presentation will be focused in two, in two patterns. We have an, uh, an architecture center and we've had it for so many years and uh, since we um, um, released our cloud that um, includes patterns and practices and guidance to, to implement solutions, either they are cloud native solutions or hybrid solutions. Um, it's available. It's available um, uh, as, as a guidance for our developers, partners, customers, right? So um, this presentation would cover a couple of the patterns that um, that are included in this uh, in, in the architecture center. Now we talk briefly about uh, the patterns, the, the the strategies for mainframe modern I and mean, in ranges modernization. But um, what is not evident? So what are we missing? Typically, um, modernizing mainframes, as I said, means modernizing or equals uh, modernizing an ecosystem. A successful modernization strategy will have to include ways to deal with uh, service level indicators and objectives, right? What are your SLAs as well, right? Um, response times, managing legacy data along with migrated data, uh, applications interdependencies, the future of the scheduler and jobs, third party tools replacement, hybrid functional and non-functional testing, non-mainframe dependencies, uh, overall interfaces, uh, during the next few months, we will cover some of these areas above a specific topic. So we'll get we'll drill down a bit on the specific on implementation of specific patterns with our product. Um, we'll do some samples. We have a main so that we can do that testing and show you how it works, right? Uh, but today we will cover two common patterns for modernization: the anti-corruption layer and the strangler freak pattern. So what is the anti-corruption layer pattern? Um, imagine that you have two systems, system A and B, and, 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 and system B is the legacy one, and system A is a set of uh, system A or subsystem A is a, is a system that is comprised of a number of microservices. They own, have their own, uh, they follow the, the, the DDD principles, the main driven design principles. They have core, they have isolation, everything, right? But you have to make them interact with this, legacy system slash monolith. It's not really a monolith, right? But uh, some folks call it monolith. Um, so we use this pattern to ensure that an application design is not limited by the dependencies on, on either system, right? So then um, you have to create this layer more of, of 
like a translator. Um, you isolate and then you create the anti-corruption layer. We'll talk more about the details of the implementation for this pattern. Um, now, in a mainframe, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes you you would think that it is just a, uh, like I said, you know, a repository of programs that run and provide results. Which that is not the case with the mainframe. A mainframe is truly an ecosystem. So you have terminal presentation mm -hmm. here. You have networking capabilities, transaction managers, uh, databases and files, and and and, and core facilities. So. Um, and also you have on-premises systems that you've been building over the years, SNA-based workloads, printing, ATMs, terminals, uh, web applications, existing data sources. And um, and then you plan to include new and, ex uh, and existing um, cloud applications, Azure apps, Azure data sources. Uh, if you are thinking about microservices and you're likely introducing an event management system as well, right? Like event grid. So then you can manage all of the notifications across microservices and the pubs app models, um, software as a service applications and open AI. Absolutely. So you're going to need a strong um, um, anti-corruption layer that will sit in the middle of these systems uh, to be to act as a translator, as I said. So. We're going, with, without getting into the detail of each one of the technologies, so I just want to leave you with this idea of creating this uh, um, anti-corruption layer, right? That uh, will have to be, we have to provide strong connectivity services, not just not just uh, REST API. Yes, it does provide. They they do provide the REST API uh, access, right? But also, how do we interact with other core systems to run on a mainframe? Because a mainframe is not a hundred percent. Um, necessarily 100% uh, a REST API based system or, or has workloads that are exposed that way. Anyway, so let's get into the Strangler Fig pattern. Uh, now, this pattern um, is, is more of a gradual, um, it shows a gradual picture. If you see in this picture, you have an early migration where the legacy is bigger than the modern system, then you have a later migration uh, where you see a legacy is smaller than the modern, and then you see a complete migration where you have a, uh, just a modern system. Um, the idea of this pattern is to incrementally migrate a legacy system by gradually replacing specific pieces of it. Um, you have to create a facade that will be intercepting requests going to the backend legacy system. Uh, this facade will route requests and, and such and such. So I think I think the whole idea is, um, is to extend the anti-corruption layer into something that evolves over time. Right and 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 to me that is uh, they are like peanut uh, peanut butter and, and and bread and peanut butter as they say right because uh, it's um, they they have to be they have to be uh, closer to each other so you have the strangle fig pattern um, you have to start defining what is a backlog for you right so if um, if you are interested in conducting this. Approach, you have to have some understanding at least of what you are going to be modernizing and to what degree. If you were to do a lift and shift modernization, for instance, uh, you will need to determine an inventory of all of these elements that you see here, right? So PDS member, GTD bases, V and files, recs, JCL and procs, um, COBOL, uh, assembler programs. So there is an alternative for each one of them, but uh, I just wanted to leave you with, uh, with this. Considering that this is a gradual modernization, you will need to focus there modernization efforts on isolating applications um you know today uh, or nowadays the concept of, of application it's clear the, clearer than what it was 30 40 50 years ago right application um back then was more like a grouping of programs and and, and data and jobs and 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 um and files and pds members and specific interfaces while today it may be similar today we have um um clearer boundaries right so you, you you are able you you are able to determine like there is like a physical boundary between applications in the past that was not necessarily the case in, in some cases that's the reason why they call them uh, monoliths um there is um, um then the next step would be to define an architecture right so if you see if we compare the uh, the picture before the mainframe before and the mainframe after the only thing that we've done is we have uh, highlighted uh, some color we have used some colors to determine the um, um the applications that we want to isolate right uh prioritization is business driven execution should consider the technical constraints so then 
you will obtain best results if you are able to set boundaries for data, jobs, programs, and external interfaces. For instance, if you are picking CICS, you have to isolate the specific CICS transactions, programs, along with their data, jobs, dependencies, mainframe, and external. You got to plan a lot for data replication, impact on SLAs, consider change data capture technologies. And if you're using messaging systems such as IBM MQ, consider leveraging it during the entire modernization. Um, so if we mix the strangler free pattern and the cor anti-corruption pattern, so then we have um, from, an app application, from an application and data integration perspective, um, Azure Logic Apps, our product, our cloud native product provides native connectors, native connectors for mainframe and mid-range. So our connectors, um, you don't have to install on a VM any product. They connect directly to the mainframe. Our connectors use our core host integration server technology to integrate with IBM CICS, IMS, MQ, 3270, DB2, and host files. And, and there is no license that you have to pay for them. They are included in, in, in the consumption that you have for the logic app. So they that's the reason, and, and also the technologies they have been around for um, from host integration server for the last twenty to thirty years. So that's why we call them native because they are they just change the place, right? They just move from one place to the other. Host integration server on Azure Virtual Machines continues providing SNA gateway support for our customers using SNA APIs, printing an APPC, um, and SQL Server provides data replication solutions for customers modernizing their their data to Azure. We, our partners also provide fantastic solutions to accomplish uh, data replication goals. And finally, a reminder that we have the architecture center where you can go and if you look for mainframe, you will find a ever growing number of reference architecture diagrams. Now, um, let's go back to the mainframe. So we have the mainframe and our objective is to reduce the mainframe. So reduce the number of workloads, migrate off the, the mainframe, make it a smaller because we want to reduce MIPS or because we just want to extend agility or we just want to extend the workloads to the cloud. Um, um, so new mainframe is going to look like this, but for it to happen, the first thing is that you're going to get to ask with requirements, right? So I need a replacement for a 3270 application, for a CICS system, for IAM, an IMS, IMS system, create a new custom application that's nothing related to the mainframe. We may have to just use some queues from the mainframe or data, or keeping all legacy SNA APIs based applications. So then you introduce our cloud. So there is the Azure cloud, there are your applications. So then what is next is that uh, now what is next is that you introduce the uh, um, the anti-corruption anti layer, right? With all of our native connectors and, and potentially host integration servers if you inter need to integrate with the legacy SNA APIs. And, and evidently you have to introduce our core services as well, right? Uh, to store relational data, our messaging system in the cloud, um, uh, ways to to deal with the binary and non-binary files in storage and also for microservices event management um, as well so then this is where it, where we just start drawing the lines um, it is um, you may not have to run all of them at once right but the whole idea of your anti-corruption layer is that uh, it will have to support it will have to become the translator between these two platforms and uh, and that is why rich and richness in connectors and variety is what you need um, to to integrate with all of these uh, uh, systems that have been built over so many years if we drill down into, for instance, the CICS pattern, and we have been provided guidance on a specific um, um, mission critical scenarios, if we take uh, the IBM CICS connector, for instance, you will see that you have um, the ability to call a CICS program, right, uh, with our connector um, using HTTP, using TCP IP, um, even SNA, you can do that with SNA if you want it with host integration server, right? But this is just one of the uh, possible implementations of the patterns that I just uh, presented in the standard figure. Um, we have a reference architecture. This is just one of many. You, you have what you have on premises. You can keep it as is, right? If you extend to the cloud, you can uh, you can use our connectors in Azure Logic Apps, and you can potentially introduce host integration server if you want to use SNA APIs. But in a nutshell, what you are doing is you are creating another path, and we are becoming the big connector, right? The hybrid connector. You see that has two elements: elements in the cloud and elements on premises. 
Um, a few last words, uh, just a reminder of the connectors that we have, the IBM MQ, host files um, to, inter in to parse binary files such as vSAN files, uh, IBM DB2 connector, CICS3270, IMSDC, and we are building an IMSDB connector as well for our customers using IMSDB workloads. Just as a, um, a last words, uh, leverage the anti-corruption and strangle fig patterns for mainframe and mid-ranges modernization. Use Logic Apps as anti-corruption layer for cloud native to mainframe and mid-ranges as a communications translator uh, between mainframes and cloud. And leverage mainframe native systems protocols or rest carefully and depending on the needs. Do not generalize. Use what you need depending on the context, right? Because remember, this will be a gradual migration and modernization. Uh, please reach out if you have further questions or need assistance with our technologies at hcampus at microsoft.com or uh, subscribe to the channel at hcampusu in uh, YouTube or follow me on Twitter. Thank you very much for your time and, and please have um, a great rest of the week.